nomination of National Assembly candidates. Thank you. This is a statement on the 6th March 2017 Dialogue of Coalition 2016 Stakeholders on Selection of National Assembly Candidates convened by the President of the Republic. On the 6th of March 2017, President Adam Abaro convened a meeting of stakeholders of Coalition 2016 to discuss the impasse in the selection of candidates for the National Assembly elections. It was intimated that nomination of candidates is just around the corner, while rancor still prevails in the ranks of the coalition stakeholders. He indicated that proposals have been given for party and independent candidature supported by the coalition. He said, as far as he's concerned, both are tactical alliances. He prevailed on members to deliberate on the merits of the two proposals. The debate centered around two concerns. Some members felt that the independent candidature would lead to the destruction of their parties without increasing chances of winning seats. Others expressed that independent candidature removes the party tag while they claim that this, if left, could lead to voter apathy. After long deliberation on the issue, on the type of candidature, it was put to a vote. Six stakeholders endorsed the party candidature supported by the coalition as the way to end the impasse. One maintained the position that an independent candidature supported by the coalition is the most viable way forward. One stakeholder expressed neutrality. The stakeholders are to discuss the modality of selection on party lines today. This is how matters stand as far as candidature is concerned for the coalition for the April 6, 2017 National Assembly election. It is important to mention that uh, prior to this, there were two positions, positions that eventually led to concern by the Gambian voters, which ultimately led to this process of engaging in dialogue to end the impasse. The floor is now opened for questions and answers. Thank you. Yes. As far as that meeting is concerned, is what I am telling you, that it is considered that both party uh, uh, candidature supported by the coalition or independent candidates supported by the coalition are both seen as tactical alliances. I think that is what, is what is stated. That was the view expressed at the meeting. That what is now clear is that parties are going to be selecting their candidates and then the parties will sit down, the stakeholders will sit down and trade on where to put candidates. on 2016. Um, from your statement, I realize that your party position is not very clear. Um, you, you envisage an independent coalition and others 
envisage a tactical, at the end of the day, the president give his blessing to the tactical coalition. So I just want to know, what's the position of uh, PDOIS? And secondly, there was a press conference held uh, on Sunday by GMC, um, UDP, NRP, where, you know, it was a heated press conference resulting to uh, the assault of one of my colleagues, which we condemn in our strongest time, and we hope that the president or those involved will, you know, bring those responsible to justice. I want to know, Mr. Salah, are you still the official spokesperson of the coalition government 2016? This is an issue raised by many. Uh, my party, who is the Minister of Interior, told journalists at the press conference that Mr. Salah is no more representing the coalition as the official spokesperson. I want to hear from you. Are you still the legitimate spokesperson of the coalition 2016? That was a huge change. Thank you. understand them, definitely you will have a problem in dealing with them. But being one of them, I'm not uh, always perturbed, but help you to understand uh, realities. Again, I must emphasize that you must use the language that has already been uttered. The dialogue was brought about by the President of the Republic. And according to him, I've told you, he considers both party candidature and independent candidature as tactical alliances. I guess he did that to try to mend fence so that no one will go and claim one form of victory or the other that he has abandoned uh, this for that. I think that is his objective that these are tactical alliances both, and that they should discuss the merit. And eventually I've told you the result. The position of DOI has always been clear. From the very beginning when the discussion em uh, emanated, DOI's position was that whatever the general body decides, it is suitable to the party. And that was declared the first day when the discussion started before this particular dialogue. And it is because some members indicated that if you put a party and a party tag, some may decide not to vote for that party because it's not the party of their choice. And that if you have independent candidature, the likeliness is that everybody will come to vote. That is what led DOI in the first instance to support those who held that view. That view was expressed at the meeting, at the dialogue, and when they reached conclusion yes. and voted, DOI's position is neutral. Right. That is it really does not matter as far as DOI is concerned. What matters is the merit of the tactic and the purpose to which the tactic will be used and whether it will achieve the desired results. That is the position of DOI. Because as far as DOI is concerned, either will definitely enhance its standing in Gambian society. But it does not want to be an object of controversy. Now, the issue of the spokesperson, well, I am here. I think that is enough, enough evidence to show that Ali Fasal is the spokesperson. And I must tell you that, uh, Brother Mahi, uh, these are people who have uh, uh, learned one or two things from me, and it is not my duty to destroy people who I should try to build up for the future of this country. So there is really no controversy <laughs> between me and my, uh, he has his opinions and he has the right to express them. If it is found wrong, well, it is unfortunate for him <laughs> because it is his integrity which is at stake, not mine. Now, the issue of what happened in terms of a journalist, well, this is a civilized society. Clearly, we want civilized uh, Gambians who will see everybody as 
brothers and sisters. Clearly, the profession one uh, uh, practices is uh, for their life. You don't even know what party those people support. Uh, journalists belong to different political parties. Even on this table, there are different political parties. So essentially, this is a Gambia where we have political pluralism, that people are entitled to support the party of their choice. And when you are a public figure, you have to be subjected to rigorous, rigorous, let's call it interrogation. That's not the right word, but that's what, what it amounts to. And if you don't want that, then don't be a public figure. So if you don't want also people to malign against you or attack you or even criticize you, well, essentially that's what public service is all about. Uh, it's being criticized, it's being scrutinized, it's being subject to restraint, you know, so that you think twice about what you say and do. Because you are not speaking for yourself, you are speaking for the public as a whole. You do not intend to represent yourself, you intend to represent people. So, and people are diverse in their thinking. That's why even the Constitution emphasizes that our public media, private media, should be open to divergent views and dissenting opinion. That is a constitutional requirement, is a constitutional mandate of the media. So essentially, if you want journalists who are not critical, then you don't want journalists. And obviously, I think the action uh, is regretted. I will not talk about uh, the person being whoever is involved, subjected to, to justice. I think uh, what is expected is to be subjected to some sense of humanization so that at least the person will have this decency to see the person offended and apologize and shake hands and say, we are brothers after all. This was a mistake in judgment. that uh, it will finish today. It is being supposed, it is supposed to be done today. But you know also that uh, nomination is starting on the 9th. So I'm sure that uh, uh, they will definitely be working very fast to come to conclusion. But I've also emphasized that uh, uh, Gambians through this experience are now liberated. They really know who they are and their powers was to be able to go and vote and for an entrenched power to disappear is a clear indication that every Gambian has a real power to determine the destiny of this land and should not in any way mortgage it or sell it or decide to abandon it for any purpose. don't you think the political wrangling that happens between the uh, political between the coalition government initially would not give chance to the, in the, the aspiring independent candidates because now uh, you're going for uh, a tactical alliance and this depends on the parties so uh, how are the parties going to put their candidates so would this not give chance to more independent party candidates in the national assembly thank you sir Elections are yet to take place, and therefore we cannot start the process of uh, analyzing uh, the outcome. Now we can only speculate, and everybody is really free to speculate what the outcome would be. I'm sure that during the debate that we had, all those points were examined. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, the conclusion is as stated. The candidate show, the one that, that opted for the independent and the one for the one who is neutral. I'm sure you 
what did he know? So if I mention the one that stuck to the independent and the neutral, that should tell you the rest. Uh, the PPP stuck to the independent coalition, whilst they express neutrality. My name is Amor Yala. I work with them already on television services. Now, as we speak, uh, already there's a lot of political activity across the country. Uh, whilst you wrangle here on the ground, you have uh, multiple candidates wishing to represent different political parties, including those of the coalition in the, uh, in the National Assembly elections. How would, uh, I know you'll be discussing the modalities, but do you take into consideration the fact that there are maybe three or four candidates representing, representing different parties within the coalition who will be vying for seats. How would you reach a compromise uh, to that effect? The modalities are being worked out. But that is the, the situation, those are the challenges envisaged. And uh, the parties, the stakeholders must address those challenges. So anything could be anticipated. I believe you know that the 2012 National Assembly elections was contested by only one opposition party. The rest were independent candidates. So this country is arrived with uh, political activities and different form of political approaches. So in many instances, your decision should be made in a wise way to enhance your chances. So essentially, it's a multi-party system, not only multi-party, but a pluralistic political system where even independent candidates could participate. So in essence, uh, we wait for the outcome and then do the analysis to be able to draw lessons. in German newspapers. Um, I don't want to interrupt the discussion about uh, domestic uh, uh, problems and tactics, but uh, our readership in Europe, we are very, very interested how fast and productive the relationship between the Gambia and the European Union and Britain and Germany developed. Now my question is, when you have a new the transitional government is established. Is there a consensus within the coalition parties about the direction uh, which is a prerequisite for this new relationship with not only with the EU but with international bodies like the understanding, acceptance of international convention of human rights and so on? And combined with that, what happened to your commitment, or not commitment, to the agreement with the EU uh, that every effort is taken to keep young Gambians in the Gambia and encourage young Gambians with their knowledge to return to their country? Is there a consensus in the coalition, in the coalition that this is going to be continued with the new parliament and so on. Thank you very much, sir. We're talking about the coalition of stakeholders, which we call Coalition 2016, which is an instrument to bring stakeholders together to contest election. And we are talking about the government which emerged out of the victory of 1st December 2016. And we are talking about a coalition again for national assembly elections. So when it comes to the coalition, oh I can speak for it. But then, yes, I used to be a spokesperson for President Barrow prior to the consolidation of the cabinet. But then the cabinet is now consolidated. 
and I'm sure uh, that uh, your interview of the Minister of Foreign Affairs should be able to tell you the international relation perspective of the government. But the coalition that brought the government about did have a discussion and dialogue with the EU delegation uh, resident in the Gambia. And there is absolutely no doubt that we have looked at uh, the Article 8, Article 9, which deals with the political dialogue and the issues uh, that are inherent in terms of respect for fundamental rights, uh, rule of law, democracy, uh, and uh, uh, good governance, uh, which must uh, underpin the relation between the EU and the country. But if you want to go into details of policy, then you must go to the policy makers. And the policy makers will constitute the president, the vice president, and the ministers. I am sure once you contact uh, the president, he will direct you to the right minister to be able to address the concrete proposals that you are making and government position on it. Thank you very much, Marianne Paul. services. Um, Mr. Sala, my question is, already there are some people who identified as coalition candidates for the National Assembly before the, I mean, agreement with this tactical alliance issue. What happens to them? Another issue is, some people are saying, okay, Mr. Sala didn't take a cabinet position that makes it, I mean, you know, evident that, you know, we are more supportive of the president than he is. Uh, you said you want to contest in the National Assembly. I agree that you cannot be in the cabinet and be in the National Assembly because of the separation of powers in the Constitution. But then, notwithstanding, you are not only the member of DOI. No <coughs> DOI member is in the cabinet. What happened? Can you please explain to us why there isn't any member from the DOI in the cabinet? And lastly, um, we understand that um, the, how to call it again, the uh, Mr. Dabo, that's Hussein uh, Dabo said on Sunday at the press conference, that the agreement um, reached by the coalition that the president is going to serve only three years is illegal. What happens? I mean, what happens next? Because he said he's going to fight it at the Supreme Court to ensure that President Barrow serves for five years in office instead of three years. Can you respond to that as the coalition spokesperson? Thank you. Point, what happens to those who saw themselves as coalition candidates? Well, they will continue to aspire and work for their candidature. And I'm sure when this dialogue takes place for modalities, they should be taken into consideration, knowing that anybody can stand as an independent candidate. Nobody can be deprived of candidature. These are just tactical alliances. They are not means of barring people. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, what has happened is an issue of a coalition trying to at least avoid uh, fracture and rancor. But essentially, uh, no one can deprive a Gambian of a right to stand, to seek the mandate of the people, if the people so wish for you to be their candidate. That's my first answer. The second thing is about uh, the position of DOI in the cabinet. We have always tried to avoid people using us to pursue other ends and using our answers to create more friction. We were offered ministerial posts on the Jamais government, on the other governments. But we have always developed principles in terms of what we do. In terms of government, we believe in the principle of separation of party and state. I don't want to stretch this because many people will stretch what I'm going to say to try to harm the government, and that's what I'm avoiding. Because if you compare our principle and other people's principle, you'll start judging other people. But go to, 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 to what I said when I was a presidential candidate. What I said. There is no need to repeat it unless you push me to do so. 
but essentially there, is, there are fundamental principles which will not make me to continue to be the Secretary General of DOI if I am to be a cabinet minister in a particular government. So essentially, we have talked about it. We have talked about our position with the president. We have reached understanding. We have respect. We are working very closely, more closely than many of you people think. You even know. Some are just closing their eyes to it. And essentially, we know that the government knows that there is no single individual in this country that has worked so hard to make what is possible to be possible today. So people forget too easily, and they want to transform us into megalomaniacs who will start praising ourselves and telling people what we have done, you know, to show that we are supportive of a government. But we will not be tempted to do so. But essentially what must be borne in mind is that the position of the party is very clear. We are situated in the National Assembly to be able to be able to guide the government in the laws that are going to be made, in the policies that will be taken, in the international relations it will contract so that our quota will be there on a broad basis, not just one organ, but on a broad basis in ensuring democracy, good governance, rule of law, and development for the country. Now, in terms of what Mr. Dabo has said, I really don't think there is any need to go to any Supreme Court for any uh, reason of that matter, because this is just simply a gentle person's agreement that a person will be there for three years. What the Constitution says is very clear, uh, that any president elected has a mandate for five years. Now, if you want to transform a gentle person's agreement into a contract that is constitutional, then you must engage in constitutional amendments. What anybody would oppose is just to say that there will never be a constitutional amendment that will enable the person who is president to be able to resign after three years and say that this is my mandate that I agreed with coalition partners as a tactic for orders to give way for a person to, to proceed because without that maybe uh, there would have been more rancor and at the end of the day there would have been no coalition at all. So all the things that were said and done were just simply meant to facilitate the selection of one person to be the presidential candidate. Now, uh, what the Constitution uh, says at the present moment is that it's five years. But if you go to recommendations made by the then Gambia Opposition for Electoral Reform is for constitutional provision to be put in the Constitution, where if a president resigns, dies, or whatever, the vice president will stay for 90 days. And after the 90 days, there will be elections of a president. So if you put that in a constitution, then obviously a person who is willing will be able to actually resign and then there will be election of president. But these are all issues that are not worth debating at the moment. What is important is the person who has been elected president can simply say, I'll be there for five years. And obviously that's what is going to stand. He does not need any help from anybody to stay for five years. It depends on him because that's what the Constitution says. Just simply don't resign or simply don't amend the Constitution and the five years will remain. Thank you. And, and, and PDI is, uh, is neutral. Uh, is this a good political strategy for the uh, coalition as far as this forthcoming National Assembly is concerned? Thank you, sir. opinions as far as strategy. One opinion is that no, uh, party led is not, party candidature is not the best. Another is saying independent candidature is not the best. 
those are the two positions. What has been done is to, uh, to try as much as possible to facilitate the nomination of candidates. And that is, that is why a decision has been made. A uh, decision is not necessarily a gospel. Uh, other parties may decide to say, let me break away and put everybody anywhere. But that is an issue for those who are sitting down to discuss the modalities. Until the modalities are discussed, one would not be able to know what the different positions are if they are, for example, contradiction. Because the objective is for one party uh, from the coalition or one stakeholder to stand in each constituency so that there will be no duplication, which, of course, would be the best for the coalition if it does not want division within its ranks. Uh, the aim of putting the uh, independent coalition was meant precisely to do so, so that all of them would participate in the selection process. But this one, each party will determine its selection process and submit its candidate, and then they will negotiate who will, whether you will accept this one to stand here or that one to stand there. Those are the modalities. I'm sure when it is done, we'll be able to interrogate what difficulties, what challenges it had to overcome to succeed. Thank you very much, Honorable Ali Kassadana. We now come to the end of this press conference. Thank you very much.